Okay, so this is a covering of Anchor Points. Um, I figured I'd do a uh, version that's not with a heavy French accent like the ones in Algorithmic. So this is following along with what they did in their training video on kind of an introduction to Anchor Points, but I want to make it a little bit easier for everybody to understand this. So we're going to go back to our character again. Uh, here we go with Open Sample, <clears throat> and we'll use our Meet Matt guy. And we're going to go ahead and solo the head. So I'm going to go to the head here and hit the button Solo. And let's go ahead and just get rid of this layer. I don't want any layers on here whatsoever. And we're going to go under our materials here and select a couple of materials. So we have the plastic PVC pipe. And I will also drag in some rust. Okay. So I'm going to put the rust on top. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a black mask. And then with that black mask selected, I will create a generator. And the generator I'm going to use is a uh, MG mask editor. And as you can see, we're starting to see the actual uh, uh, masking taking effect where the rust is being exposed in the curvature areas. So if I come over here and hold down Alt and click on the uh, actual mask, we can see what's going on here. <clears throat> Let's go into our mask editor and make a couple of alterations here. We can see we have our curvature. We can kind of increase that. And try to break up this very uniform line, we can go ahead and add a texture. So under the texture, um, I'm going to go ahead and add a file. So under here, under texture, uniform color, I'm going to click. And we're going to go ahead and choose black and white spot 2. And with that, we're going to go ahead and increase it. And now you can start to see the effect we're getting. And then with a little bit of contrast to kind of crush the blacks and the whites. And a little bit of color balance to bring everything down exposure-wise. We get a nice mask. So I'm going to go ahead and pop out of the masking mode by clicking anything. And now we have this nice formation of rust. Now the common problem we've had before, before the wonderful uh, creation of Substance Painter 2017, was that if I came in here with a layer, so I'll just make a regular layer, right? And I'll put that just below the rust fine. It's important that when you do this, the layers are below the actual generator that we're going to fiddle with. And here I'm going to go ahead and just call this uh, plus rust uh, normal. And with this actual layer, we're going to go ahead and only paint normal right here. I'm also going to come over here and turn off my pen pressure on my Wacom for no pressure. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the uh, normal uniform color. Scroll down until I get to this cross plus sign here. So now if you can see, the problem was back in the day, uh, you would actually put a plus sign and you'd be like, hey man, I want that rust to show up right here where the normals have been uh, imprinted on, right? Because you basically have a baked based, uh, you know, setup here and you're working from your actual uh, texture set maps that you baked out. But you're like, hey, I want that rust to kind of register here, right? So in order for that to occur, you'd have to bake out or uh, go to your export and export out the normal map and then bake together that normal map with your actual base normal high res, low res, and then do it again. But thankfully, they've created these anchor points, which are pretty cool. So they can be a bit confusing. So hold, hold on tight here. First off, rule number one, the plus rust normal or anything has to be actually below this level. If it's not below this level, um, it won't show up. A bit odd in my opinion, but anyway, regardless, uh, now what we can do is if you go ahead and take a look at this, we can go ahead and add an anchor point. So you just go to add anchor point, looks like an anchor, boat anchor. There's nothing much to this except giving it a name. So I'll just call it like normal, more normal depth data, All right? And with that, you have a name attached to this, and that's it. That's all that goes on with this layer. This is referencing back to something, or it's kind of like a uh, kind of like a beacon for anything out there. And you know, right here is the Rust Fine, and here's our actual editor. So what we have to turn on first, uh, as we kind of scrub down here, and we'll make our way to this uh, micro normal and micro height. So we painted normal data, and we're going to talk about normal data, and this also works for height information. Most of the time you will be using micro height and not normal. Most people don't paint normals. They usually paint height when it comes to depth. So I'm going to go over to micro normals, click it, and you'll see we have the option for an anchor point, and here's the available anchor points. As I select it, it's showing me where it's being referenced. See, it's like highlighted up there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and this opens up a whole bunch of extra options here. 
First off, even though you have micronormals uh, working, uh, you can see you're still not getting a result. What's that all about? Well, first off, you have to come over here to the reference channel, okay? And you have to choose what is it referencing in regards to creating the actual mask. So you want to choose normal. And as you can see, there's still nothing going on. So what's that all about? Well, if you scrub up here, uh, you will see an option. Let's go ahead and find out what that sucker is. And you should see, oh, where'd it go? You should see this little micro details tab, and you're gonna open that up, and you have to turn on micro, uh, macro, micro details normal. And voila, this finally takes into effect. Now we're starting to get kind of a bleeding together from here to here. That could be due to the fact that our actual um, contrast or balance needs to be affected here. So I might dial that down, add some contrast. Right, so yay, we're getting this effect. So I can come in here now, and this is when you're painting these normal stamps. As you can see, it works pretty well, right? Well, um, what if you wanted to uh, do this on a whole series of layers, okay, that would be below this? Well, if that's the case, you would actually come over here to your normal, right? And you want to set this to pass through. So I'm going to put this to pass through. And now any layer under this should comply. So I'm going to go ahead and make a whole crap load of layers here. So let's see, let's make add a layer, add a layer, add a layer, right? And all these puppies are going to be below this. There we go. And they're all here. So on any one of these layers, and all these layers, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, paint with normal data, right? So as you can see, yay, look at that, it's working. It's passing through. now. This is a bit dangerous in the respects that if you have layers down here that you don't want to respect this dust or dirt application, um, you're going to be in trouble in that case. Okay, so keep that in mind because this is kind of like a this is like an X-ray going down, right? So just be aware of that possibility. Now, what we can also do here is I'll go ahead and get rid of these layers, get rid of this one, and get rid of this one. And we are back here with the uh, regular, I'll go ahead and go back to base color here. And let's let's uh, make this happen to height as well. So not just normal data, but height data. So what we can do with that is we can go over here to the uh, actual mask editor. And we are going to put this to, uh, put on height information on as well. And again, you have uh, this whole thing with micro normals, but you also have micro height. So you got to click on that. You got to go to the anchor point. You got to choose the anchor point. So now you have micro normals and you have micro height. And again, you have this. The reference channel is the normals for the normals, and then the micro height reference is for, in our case, height, as you can see here. So with all that said, this is on. These are all set up correctly. And now if I come back in here and I actually paint some height information in here, so I'll height, uh, go f uh, forward here and I'll make a, uh, let's find a really cool brush. Uh, so I'll go ahead and find, or actually I was trying to find a good alpha here. And I'll use this V shape here. And let's paint it in. So there you go. Something weird going on there. It might be the shape itself. I don't know yet. Let me go back to my brushes. Uh, it might be the fact that our normal map is engaged still, so I'll go ahead and disable that. Yeah, that's it. So as you can see, now it's respected for height information. And again, uh, in this case, if you want the layers below it, I'll go ahead and create a couple more layers here. So I'll add a layer, like a crap load of layers, drag those underneath, because it's important that they're underneath. And now I can go to any one of these, and if you can see when I paint height, right, so I'm going to go ahead and paint height information, you can see that, let's actually come over here. We're getting something. Let's go ahead and take a look at the option here. Uh, if I take a look at the height information right here, you can see that um, what I want to do here is put this to pass through. And now it's respecting the height information. So again, in order to get a pass-through, you can do all of that. Um, if you don't want to do pass-through, because you might want to have layers in here that don't respect the adding of the dirt, you can set this back to normal, and you can set the uh, normal uh, data back to 
uh, let's see here, let's go to normal, and then you go to the normal map, uh, normal map details, I think it is, yeah, NMDT. So that's the default in here, and if you do that, okay, you're, you're not getting a pass-through on any of this information, so I'll go ahead and delete these layers. Right, and so if I create a series of layers again here, so I'll just create a series of uh, regular layers in here. All right, so there's like three, three layers in here. And now if I come in here and take a look, and if I paint height, all right, let's go ahead and just paint height. You can see there is no uh, details being added. So if that's the case, what you need to do uh, in, in that respect, if you do want this to respect this whole reality, is you can come in here for this specific layer, for instance, and have this uh, add an anchor point on here. And we can go ahead and call this anchor point um, V stuff, right? And if we go to the mask editor, and you come down here to the uh, micro details here, right? So we, we did height, right? So you can click on that, and now you have uh, this, you have both normal de uh, depth and then the V stuff. So if I can do the V stuff here, and then once again you have to tell it, hey, I need height. Now it's being respected, as you can see. So again, as you kind of look through this, these are retained and these have been added. So it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tricky reality here, like I said before, because maybe on these specific layers here in the middle, you uh, you don't want to have any dirt respect for it going on. But that, in a nutshell, is understanding of anchor points. Uh, they are pretty pretty awesome, uh, like I said. So keep that in mind. Now, I believe if I go ahead and show you, like, take a look at this. Like, here's the information here. Let's go ahead and just turn it off and on, right? So there's the on and off information that's been painted. And it's been embedded in there, so it's looking pretty good. So that's pretty much for anchor points. A bit confusing, it's basically a three-step process, right? you got to create an anchor. That's one step. And then the next step is you have to, you know, turn on these, uh, micro details, height, normal. And then you actually have to plug in the reference of what it is that you're, the anchor that you're referencing. And then you got to set this normal to normal and then the height reference channel to height. A bit annoying, but it is what it is. VFX for Filmmakers proudly releases Scratch to Substance Volume 1. Whether you're an environment modeler creating assets for a game engine or a visual effects specialist looking to create pre-rendered photorealistic worlds, this package is for you. In this training video, we start with modeling in Maya via photographic perspective. After proper care is taken for UV layout, the models are brought into Substance Painter for materials and texturing, then exported to both Arnold and Maya and Unreal 4. Throughout this 10-hour course, we cover photographic modeling techniques, seamless UV strategies, building out a high-res mesh for baking, ID mask creation in Maya, map baking techniques in Substance Painter, fill layers versus layers, creating custom smart materials, generators, building Substance Designer templates, creating materials in Designer, stencils, decals, material stencil projections, grunge maps, procedurals, filters, dirt cracks, weathering, projection texturing, Unreal Engine level setup and diagnostics, scale setup in virtual reality, rebaking normal maps, and rendering in Arnold for Maya. VFXForFilmmakers.com, the next evolutionary step for storytellers.